I'll transition then if nobody has anything off rip. Uh, just because we mentioned uh, if it's a Derrick Rose MVP coming up in the ne- in the near future, we don't really have a LeBron like a Heat team to be hated. But what if Giannis maybe wants out soon because the coach is gone now? Chris Middleton's a free agent. I think he has a chance to be a free agent this year. Drew Holiday's up for an extension. Brooke Lopez is a free agent. And more importantly than all of those contract statuses, they're all old and probably don't have more than three seasons left in them. How much longer is Giannis playing in Milwaukee? That's probably a weird way to approach the Bud conversation, but how much longer do you guys think Giannis stays in Milwaukee, actually? Uh, oh man, I'm interested to see actually. Yeah, that's uh, them firing Bud just surprised me. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I can see him wanting. I can see him wanting out. I just don't know where he goes. But uh, that's scary. Pretty scary to think about. Not as early as this summer. Am I being too anxious to say maybe there's a chance even this summer, some out of nowhere? Too I mean, I right. can't. I can't put it past anything with the NBA these days. Like, like, I guess, and that's where I was going to go with it was, I would say, yeah, I would lean too early. But my, my, where I was going to bring up or just my ration was, I don't, plus organization has never impressed me. And I think that they stumbled into, stumbled into being just good enough to pull off that uh, championship. And then like mm-hmm. kind of that hit, like, it, it, we know, I feel like a lot of people talk about how it hit, but, like hit Bud was hiding, but I think Bud. People talked about Bud not being as good of a coach, or mm-hmm. or that championship secured his job. But he had his flaws, and everyone, yeah, everyone kind of knows of Bud's playoff flaws. I think the front office was as much, if not more, of a problem going in, like to the my, the Bud era. I don't think they really resolved anything. I think they got lucky with Drew Holiday. I don't think anybody really saw Drew Holiday being this impactful and this good as he was for the Bucks in the championship run and really just overall the last two three seasons. He had one of his best seasons, regular seasons last season. Mm-hmm. But I think that I think Drew Holiday and then Brooke, like I think I think those two. I give him credit. They're like crafty vet moves, but the Drew Holiday move at the time, it just didn't. Nothing about what they were, the direction the the general manager, of the organization was going, made it feel like they knew what they were doing for Giannis. Like they they were going to know how to put a team around Giannis to win the championship, and it feels like player, the player, probably Drew Holiday, the greatness of Giannis, onto the cool poop, Giannis, and and uh, is what gets them close. It gets them there. I don't think the team that really went in but the Bledsoe that's what it was like the, the the big decision before I guess was Bledsoe Brogdon kind of thing I think that's where they were at I think before holiday and just mm-hmm. I don't think they had a good understanding of like how to do this it's like like how to how to yeah how to build a content like how to really build a contender that was going to make get past the conference finals you know it felt like they were going to come up and you pair that with but it feels like yeah now we can see this is probably going to end in first second or even best case scenario, third third round playoff losses where your flaws flaws of the roster and the flaws of the coach are exposed. So, I guess all that to say, the the, the organization is really really incompetent, or or if that's what's behind the scenes is that they really don't know what they're doing and they just fired their coach. Then yeah, maybe Giannis sees really quickly that they have no idea what they're doing and how to put this all together because, like you said, everything feels like it could kind of like yeah, you get. Question: Middleton start taking some offers or whatever. The Brook Drew being old, the Brook and Drew being older situations, like like and needing to needing to needing to get the value back because they've been so instrumental in yeah the regular season of your team now. Like see this organization really quickly kind of folding to folding and and yeah and and they would have to be putting put their foot in their mouth in a crazy way. But I do not know if that's not possible. Like I've never had confidence or faith in that. So. Yeah, Milwaukee. Uh, I've always felt, yeah, Giannis. I feel like if Giannis, but more realistic, more realistic, I feel like Giannis sees the real Milwaukee Bucks the next two, three years, and then he probably wants out, and nobody will see him feel any type of way because I feel like he's, they're not going to be, yeah, I don't know how, how they put a team, I don't know how this organization puts a team around Giannis transitioning out of this era. Of the team. Yeah, you put yourself you put yourself in a weird spot. Like for a good reason. Like if you put yourself yeah, in the spot it. to win a championship and you win a championship, like 
fucking didn't make a mistake. It's a, it's a success every time. Um, but yeah, this is the result. And now you're on a team. You're on a team where it's like, yeah, you, yeah, it's a, it's going to be tough to even bring the team back intact. It's going to cost you a lot. And even that might not feel like enough. Cause again, it's, it's everybody in their thirties and like later thirties, not later, uh, mid thirties, approaching mid thirties for some of them. So We'll see. We'll see how it goes. It could just also be, you know, fresh coach. Maybe they still want more with this group before it really falls apart. Who knows who they try to bring in? It'll be interesting to see. Any, any. Oh yeah, who they bring in? Like, yeah, I haven't heard much. Maybe besides like a little nurse talk, but like any dream like land. Anybody that you think would be perfect for the spot, or anybody you think would be good. Mm. I haven't heard much yet. It's just didn't have. I feel like it happened. I feel like I saw it happening during the. Either right before the Lakers game, Warriors Lakers game, it hasn't yeah. hasn't been out there for 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 a while yet. Yeah, not, yeah. I wonder who they get. Yeah. I also want to say I feel like yeah, whenever their fall off happens, it's just gonna it, we're gonna notice it's gonna happen quick. I feel like whenever it does happen, mm-hmm. like sooner or later, it's gonna happen quick. Because at the end, cause, yeah, even if it happens later, who wants to after everybody's gone or everybody's aging out? No, like who really wants to go? What's yeah, what star that Giannis Milwaukee, need yeah. wants to go and play Milwaukee? It's like, it's always yeah. an issue. I don't know. Last time someone asked him about playing for the Bulls, and he seemed like he was open to it, which was a weird thing for him to do. That was a year or two ago. So who knows, man? Mm. Um, any <laughs> other thoughts on anything else that's going on in the NBA? I was going to ask before we wrapped up. For predictions for tomorrow, but before that, any any thoughts on anything else that's been going on in the NBA today, last couple of days since we've been on? Last thing on Giannis, I say KD better get to Miami before Giannis do. He's gonna <laughs> take your spot, boy. <laughs> he ain't going nowhere once he get there. So he, that's yeah. oh, that's what, okay. That I remember the KD on KD's unlucky in a weird way to me because I think. You look at most of the top ten players of all time, all the players ahead of him, or whatever you rank them, but the players around him, the mm-hmm. ten, ten to twelve best. It's like mm-hmm. I think they all got a great basketball mind and like years with a great basketball mind, and I think the closest KD gets to that is the Warriors with Kerr and yeah, him and Kerr and or just it's just yeah for me it's that's a whole whole deep dive mm-hmm. of the last season of them those two together. But it's just fun. I think it's funny to think of. KD needs to maybe find that. I think his last chance I and mean, get get to Pat Riley mm-hmm. because I mean Shaq's a merch. I guess that's the whole. Like Shaq went Phil Jackson. Shaq went to Phil Jackson. He went from Phil Jackson and he got traded to Pat Riley. Like I think that's where his championship. Like he he went to great basketball minds, great people who knew how to mm-hmm. put great basketball teams together. And KD, I mean he did it, and everybody got mad <laughs> when, he did it, when he did it. But you know, but and he did it in a, in a specific way. But I do think that's where he you know as far as. Mm-hmm. But watching him year by year go through, like trying to figure this out, what his looks like in the NBA, I think it still just makes sense to try to attach yourself to one of these guys, like one of the one of the coach, one of the, somebody along that coaching tree, or that the Phil Jackson Popovich, uh, that Riley like uh, tree of success, because all of the ten greatest players benefited from those guys. That's our. <laughs> In a lot of ways, and once they got with those guys, they really didn't leave those guys. So I don't like I said, I don't blame except LeBron, except for LeBron, except for LeBron. And KD yeah. wanted to be LeBron, and you know, KD's not. Hey, I think the, the moral of this story is KD's not LeBron. Because as much as to your point, KD didn't get any of that. You know what KD got that none of those other people got to play with Tim yeah. Duncan or Stephen Curry. Um, so that's the other side of it. And again, it's probably equivalent. Like I'm not gonna say one's better than the other. But you know, only LeBron yeah. leaves and has success after. No, only LeBron leaves and has success after the fact. And KD wanted to be yeah. LeBron. And all. Yeah. KD, we're learning KD's not LeBron. It's so LeBron won with Steph. One with Ty Lu, and he won with, with Frank Vogel. Yeah, KD ain't winning with Jacques Vaughn and Monty Williams, boy. It ain't happening. <laughs> And like Ty Lue's a great coach. Frank Vogel had a great oh, yeah, season yeah. coaching that year, but Frank Vogel is a uh, Frank Vogel is never until that point really established himself as a uh, playoff level. like right. playoff top tier high level elite playoff success type of coach. So you know, yeah. you could argue he's maybe an equivalent to a Scott Brooks type. Actually, if you think if you think closely about it, 
But, uh, I ain't gonna do that. I love, I've always loved Vogel, and I've never had a. I've always liked Vogel. I've never liked Scott Brooks, so I can't really go. But yeah, yeah. similar I, levels like, of success. I'll say that. You know, similar uh, levels hey. of success. Yeah. One of them had KV, and when one, one of them had Bronny won a championship yeah, in the West. So yeah, there we go. Point. Yeah, yeah. was it go. goofy ass Paul George? He got a, <laughs> he got a lot out of goofy ass Paul George. He made a career. He got his whole career out of that. Roy Hibbert. He had Roy Hibbert doing yogurt. Uh, yoga. Boy, Hibber. Bro, Hibber doing yoga. And yeah, Paul George. Paul George looking like a serious basketball player. Lance. Lance. Ray Vogel was doing some work. Danny Granger. The NBA used to be ugly as hell. That's so mean Danny. to say about Danny, Danny Granger. Oh, no. It's, it's, he was a bucket. Man. I know that. He was one of the. Just Danny try Granger to go back and watch them the games, man. Who? I don't know. Yeah. It's different. It was different, you know. Uh, it was different. Uh, any uh, Devin Harris, like Ooh, Devin Harris. he's with all stars. I never forget that season. He was think quick. About, <laughs> think who the, think about how much better Jalen Brunson is than Devin Harris. Yeah, <laughs> hey man, that's not a good. <laughs> but they've had they've done similar things both in the New York, Brooklyn, New Jersey sphere. Both like second tier player, like kind of second level players on the Dallas Mavericks. You know. Yeah, nah, it's yeah, yeah. It it, have, it changed fast. It changed fast, Old especially with the gu- with them guards. Well, I guess well, those weren't role players back then. Those were all stars. So, yeah. no, well, no, Danny, it was like it was Danny Granger player. was nice, but um, Devin that Devin Harris year that was, yeah, was just was random. Yeah. yeah, both all stars. Yeah, he made it once, point. maybe, and then and Devin then. Harris definitely got one. He got an East one, but you know, he uh, yeah. he was better in the West than he was in the East, but he got an East one. That was the post. Wait, did that how Jason Kidd got the championship? No, Devin Harris. What did Devin Harris go back? Sure. Uh, I think they did that, no, for each other. no, that was for each other. Yep, I think I'm they pretty, did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, because that's like he, yeah. after the All Star. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. That's funny. Um, okay, any predictions? Man. Oh, my bad. Go ahead, somebody. Else. No, you get Devin Harris on NBA Live was nice, man. <laughs> no, or two K two two K. Or he had the nice yeah, shot. The he had nice pack. I felt like he had like his own little layup package that didn't have his name on it, but it was the Devin Harris yeah. like. Package. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Ah man, NBA man, I'm trying to get old. He's playing. Yeah, you said played Danny Granger that time. era. You said Danny Granger, like basketball used to be ugly. I was like, that's that was ten years after basketball started looking cool. I mean, it was ugly ten years before it was, that. It, Five no, years it was that. still pretty ugly. I, don't know. I know. We're looking still, back at this, like the nineties, the Western Conference this. basketball. We talking about Ooh. Central Division. Central Division was rough. Yeah, true. Danny yeah. Granger. Yeah, Indiana Danny Granger was the, the most Pistons. polished. Like was the most was the most aesthetically pleasing basketball player probably in the Central Division. When did the, the besides, when did the uh, Bobcats Brian. stop being a team? When did they? That's a good question. What year was that officially? It would have been. Ooh, it was it's probably around oh eight, right? Yeah, I was gonna say oh eight, oh nine. I'm Gerald Wallace, because it was Gerald. They had a team: Gerald Wallace and Stephen Jackson. Like that's yeah. it. Bro, that's what's man. They got too many teams in the NBA. That's what's a problem, man. It's really Getting a problem. More. Getting two more. That's so dumb. That's so dumb. I mean, they're more ready for it than ever now. But it was—it's really a crime. That people like Stephen Jackson, man. The he was a Bobcats. hooper. Okay, oh eight was too soon. Somebody want to guess the last year of the Charlotte Bobcats? It was wait, oh eight, oh too soon. Okay, I was about to say 2012. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 20, 2011, 2012? Still too soon. So wait, this is what I'm telling you. How I'm telling you. So it was after that. So that's damn. Yeah, yeah. Fifteen. <laughs> nah, close. They was no. 2014. 14? Yeah. I was gonna say they wasn't. Was it 13, 14? 13, was 14 their was their last season. season. Yeah. Jeez. Okay, that makes sense. But I mean, it, it don't feel right. But I, it makes sense. Cause Kimba, Kimba, oh wait, Kimba was a Bobcat. Kimba, yeah, yeah, yeah Kimba, Kimba was a Bobcat. Bobcat. Dang, oh, oh, show funny. drafted a Bobcat. He's a Bobcat. Boy. Was that three years? He got drafted eleven. Cause that's the thing. I wonder what we're thinking. Cause remember, like the only like New Orleans had to not be the Hornets anymore. When did New Orleans become the Pelicans? Yeah. That's why I was getting confused. Cause I feel like wait. Oh yeah, wait. Now I'm getting yeah. Now I'm getting double confused. New Orleans became the New Orleans Pelicans. Pelicans. The that was Pelicans and then the Bobcats just 
Yeah, that's the one. The New Orleans became the Pelicans. I feel uh, like a year after they was like, okay, so we can make the Bobcats the Hornets again. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm yeah. I think when that. That must have been 13. Hornets to Pelicans. Yeah, 13 to 15. Hornets to Pelicans. Yeah. yeah, that's so dumb. Why did they do that? That's going <laughs> to just be so confusing down the line. Just. <laughs> No, it's uh, cause yeah, they just adopted the history, right? Cause the Charlotte Hornets become the New Orleans Hornets. Yes, yeah, so the New Orleans Hornets, the New Orleans Pelicans don't have a history pre two thousand thirteen. It's really weird, even though yeah, that, that team has been start. around longer than the Charlotte Bobcats. Have been yeah, around. cause the Bobcats, I think, adopted the Hornets' history. It's even yep. weird just looking at the wikis and like, oh yeah, these are two basketball teams that share a basketball. It's like it's like share a historical basketball team. It's really weird. It's weird. Mm. Too many teams added. Too many teams, man. Right. Was, they added all the teams in like twelve years. We have, have, yeah, like, have to have a team in Mexico soon. Mexico. Yeah, no, nah, that's happening. That's where the NBA wants it. I know everybody wants Seattle and Vegas. We'll probably get one of those two, but the NBA wants Mexico City. As long as the G League team thing doesn't like end as a catastrophe, we're getting it. I got a feeling. Who? Hey, you know, hey, they don't got thirty good owners. They they barely got good enough good GMs. I don't know. If we need to add this expansion thing. It just it's, it's it's usually ugly at the beginning. It is. It's gonna be different this time. Skill level is crazy right yeah, now. It's no, gonna be interesting. It's, yeah, it's higher than a second. It's cool and all. It's probably just more. Yeah, the back looking back at what I've watched the last twenty years, I'm like, why did they expand? Why did they do that? They didn't need to do that. Nothing about early two thousands basketball needs thirty teams. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, especially early two thousands basketball. Uh, and they're just like adding, 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 like that, 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 that. that we was done. No, one more. Well, the 29 go one more as soon as the 2000 start and Damn, and uh, relax 29 was, a, was a tough number on the it went down that. got rid of somebody went back to 28 <laughs> could have kept the divisions at four um NBA. anyways i was mad steven jackson's on the bobcats why was anybody on the bobcats that's all the waste to everybody the bobcats were well, done even just, bobcats not even just the, when jackson, they came to the hornets we remember they this came to, that's what, Jackson on the Bobcats? Steven Jackson negotiated a contract, like went up to himself, didn't even use the agent. He went up to the GM's office and negotiated a contract extension during the Steve Cohen era Warriors. And as soon yeah. as he got that contract extension, about a week and a half later, he demanded a trade. Hey, and, and ideally they should have shipped him off to one of the maybe worst teams in the league, but not... Not not the thirtieth worst team in the league that doesn't belong in the professional sports. Drag that where he team to, to the go. playoffs before Al here. Was he still there? No, he was there the first time. That's the thing. I was there the second time. Yeah, he was. He did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he got Jefferson. Weevil League. Mm-hmm. So Steve Jackson starts one. on That's the Spurs. The Granger, yeah. See, okay, this is okay. I just look. I will say real quick, the, real quick because in two thousand and two. Go ahead, my bad. Tony Parker, you look at the level Tony Parker. I don't know if Mount Jones even in, even in the NBA when they won that chip, the 2003 championship yet, or if he's even came over yet or played. Wait, who? Mount Ginobili. Oh, but Ginobili. Parker, Ginobili, Stephen Jackson. The A's that they all are in 2003, the roles that they play on that team. Stephen Jackson, looking forward, could have been just as important as Tony Parker to that dynasty as it could have been. And it's crazy where his career ends up, I feel like, bouncing over. He plays on the – yeah, an eight seed that meets a one seed, which is a crazy highlight in your career to have. But compared to being on, you know, the dynasty, being a, being on the San Antonio Spurs dynasty, and then also, yeah, spending time on something that probably should have never even existed when you could have just maybe ended up on another team that saw your yeah. potential. Well, you you skipped, like, the, the you skipped the moment. You skipped the moment. You skipped the moment. Where did he go out to San Antonio? It. Well, that's the thing. You, that's the thing. You skipped the moment. He he was on and the he best had, team oh, in the East. Had. Yeah, he was on the best team in the East after he left San Antonio. That's all Malice and the Palace's fault that we. Didn't, he didn't get it like he was supposed to, you know, and also partially his fault because he didn't have to punch that many people when the mouth of the palace happened, but he did. Hey, you man. know, he did. I mean, that's hey, that's hey, hey. David Stern was hey man. He expanded the league. He got the it's fans all, acting crazy. Not protecting the players. He's it's all Ben Wallace. Ben Wallace, ben Wallace, started Wallace started choked the man on the court. I love how we always just forget that part. Like as much as Ron Artest, crazy. like I don't want to even like Ron Artest. Literally got two hand choked out by one of the most scariest players in the NBA. Just decided to lay down for some reason. He's Ron Artest. Get his and somebody threw a beer at him. You know what I mean? Everything. 
it just, everything about Ron, Ron Artest was doing made sense that night. It was just, yep. It's like no. nothing crazy happened but to Ron Steven Artest. Jackson? He kept his composure. <laughs> hey, hey. Steven Jackson's even more defensible than uh, J.O. Because like, even Steven Jackson, you kind of you feel a level of control like defending this guy. J.O. is literally just looking for people to punch. It's the funniest shit in the world. It's, yeah, it was. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. I, just, I still feel bad. Yeah, I feel bad for all them dudes. Yeah. It was their That's moment. such a no, weird sucks, time man, in the NBA, That was a really good team, man. That really should have been something, especially just that Spurs, Pistons era, kind of who dominates that era, I guess, is that they had this a moment. Last time, the last time, last time I want to ever, last time I hate on Steve Nash because I've been hating on him pretty hard in my head recently, and I don't know how to how to rank him again. I feel like I'm a kid again where I was, I feel like, yeah. Run our test. <laughs> Run our test at that Indiana Pacers team. <laughs> they stay together. Who has, who has a more realistic chance of going to the championship? Run our test, Steven, Ron Artest and that Pacers team stays together for the next five years versus Steve Nash and the Phoenix Suns, who never went to the championship in the Western Conference. Yeah, no, definitely the Pacers, but that's also Who the best player on that team, too? Also I think it's Ron Artest. No, definitely, but that's also... It's a point. It's a point to why Ron Artest is probably closer, or I should say, Meta, whatever. What are we supposed to call him? Ron yeah, Peace, whatever we're supposed to call him. Oh, now. So, my bad. But no, no, it's just, I don't think he cares that much actually. But um, I think it speaks to his how close, how much closer he is to Nash, we probably think. But also, it does speak to like Thank you. the East is like. It was fine. Yeah, the East is bad. The East, like, part of the reason why Rontres has a better chance is because he doesn't have to go through Tim Duncan, Kobe, Shaq, yeah. Dirk Nowitzki, and all that to get there. Which, again, just like, also, that's part of LeBron's thing. It's part of, like, even Jordan's thing, too, a little bit. So it's not, like, a knock or anything. But, yeah, no, it's a good point. The Ron Artest, I probably, think like, that's you could argue, what we missed. probably, like, argue that Steve Nash was never as bad a defender as anybody said he was, but Ron Artest was nowhere close to, like, Ron Artest was just a great two-way basketball player on both ends of the court, you know? One I mean? of the, I think, yeah, but, yeah, probably at his peak, yeah, it just got weird, man. He's just, yeah, one of the best, probably, yeah, one of the best two-ways we ever seen. They were shooting threes. I mean, they were playing Reggie Miller. They were shooting, him and Steve Jackson both shooting threes at the time. It just felt like that team was going to be ahead of the curve in a way. As the Pistons were falling off, too. Like, the Pistons were not. They like, felt like the Pistons kind of uppercut everybody, that 0 2 3 4 5 even. But, like, after that, the door was right open for the Pacers to really just, like, all right, this is kind of – Ron Artest and Steve Jackson are in their prime. Ron Artest is in his prime. And I guess all that to say is, yeah, yeah just the peak of, peak of Ron Artest, another example of – Similar to Steven Jackson, he ends up going to take two games off the Spurs on the Sacramento Kings. Like, you know, and he has some cool, play, uh, has some cool playoff moments with the Rockets. He has cool playoff yeah. moments. Like, yeah, it's like well, he has cool playoff moments on teams that don't really have a chance to win a championship or anything like that. It's just like, ah, so man. saying you didn't want We Believe to happen? I'm not saying, saying it, man. It's just, you know. That's what makes We Believe special because Don, yeah, that's a, every every single one of those guys is, is so interested in their basketball journeys before and after. But but yeah, just where the NBA is at. But yeah, no, I, just, I guess the, the 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 I guess it was all to say when we talked about the Kendrick Perkins thing. It was just like there was never a world, especially in 2005. I guess in 2005, like the way America was, like there was never a world where Ron Artest was going to get close to top two or three in MVP voting, and there was a world where Steve Nash. Was definitely like was definitely was gonna be where Steve Nash, yeah, throughout his prime was there was no doubt at that time if a player, a white player like Steve Nash was going to be putting up the level of play that Steve Nash was, he was gonna get as many votes or gonna be as close to the MVP award as he could be. So, like, just yeah, mm, Nash is amazing. I feel like I'm hating on the dude now, he's great. I just run our test, probably peak run our test, man. You know, that dude, was, I'm taking him probably over a lot of people. A lot of people. Yeah. One season. Peak our test. Yeah, we never really got it. I mean, that was tough. The season I was there, we didn't get it, which is always going to be the thing. With Ron, it was like when it all came together. That was going to be a really good team. It was already a really good team just to start that season.